The Nats fell behind early last night, and though they battled to the end, the Braves' bullpen rose to the occasion and denied any comeback. Just two left on the home schedule. You've got a front row seat on Masson. It's right now a delightful Saturday afternoon for baseball at Nationals Park. Come on down from the Navy Yard Station. How about those members from the rookie class of 06, Ugla and Zimmerman? Dan Ugla no longer with the Marlins, but a very important part of an Atlanta ball club that is trying to battle its way into the wild card race. The Braves' magic number is three. Three up on St. Louis with five to go. Giants hanging by a thread. So here we are at the ballpark as the Nats continue to try to be spoilers. Fell behind early last night, couldn't get it done. Uh, but the Nats aren't seeing Tim Hudson today. They're going to see some of the young Atlanta pitching the next two days. Yeah, they're seeing Brandon Beachy today. He's lost his last four starts. Just went four and a third last time out, over 100 pitches. But the story today is Chen Ming Wong. Yeah. Well, let's hope he can sink the ball and pitch the way he did at home when the Marlins were here last weekend. Getting stronger all the time, and I know you were very impressed with his breaking ball in that game. Yeah, he's coming off his first win in six starts and his longest start of the year, six and two-thirds innings, and he had a great slider last time out. And we've been highlighting the first inning for Chen Ming Wong. If he gets through that, he's fine. So pitches one through 25 for Chen Ming this year, a 333 opponent's average against, but pitches 26 through 50 is where he really settles down, a 232 average against. So it's all about the first inning, and I think he's getting stronger, and that's why the slider was good last time out. So Wong goes out there trying to get a winning record. Jason Wirth hit homer number 20 on the season against Johnny Ventures, who'd only given up one all year. Earlier this year, August 30, he took Brandon Beachy deep. And Jason Wirth this year reaches the 20 home run plateau for the fourth time in his hard hitting career. you buy your local Ford dealers and buy Verizon Fios Fios a network ahead to learn more visit verizon.com slash get Fios right down the banks from the Navy Yard Nationals Park Pudge Rodriguez told Davey Johnson if he got to start a game this weekend he would prefer to handle Chin Ming Wong so he's behind the plate today and it is so great to see Pudge with the gear on back in the lineup today 
Visit train.com for an independent train comfort specialist dealer near you. Hard to stop a train. Cloudy skies, quite pleasant. 74 degrees, humidity, <laughs> thank goodness, is down. And maybe the pitchers will be able to have a nice drier grip on the baseball today. Wong will need that against the Braves, who feature Bourne, Prado, and Jones. Jipper's last 30 games hitting 321. He's also second in the league at 351 with runners in scoring position. Dan Ugla, big factor in the series already, as well as Brian McCann and Freddie Freeman. And they feature at shortstop the ex-Pittsburgh Pirate and Seattle Mariner, jumping Jack Wilson. So here's Wong with his 11th start as an ad. Right now he's 3-3 three and three with a 431 ERA. Well, last time Al got his first win in six starts. Pitched six and two-thirds innings of six-hit ball, out three runs. Struck out a season-high five and didn't walk anybody. Slider was really good last time. We'll keep an eye on that today. Fastball slider change from Wong. Here's the defense for the Nats behind Chen Ming Wong. Morse and Keel and Worth in the outfield. Desmond and Zimmerman on the left side. Espinoza and Marrero on the right side. And Pudge in the squad. How about Pudge? First start since July 4th. I mean, it's a good thing that he's playing today, and we always love the energy he provides in the lineup. But, I mean, when you haven't played in as long as he has, and that's a tough go. You come in at the end of the year, you get a couple of spot starts, you haven't seen live pitching, so... We're happy to see him in there, but it's going to be tough. Pudge had a walk in four ABs that day and a 5-4 win against the Cubbies. And the Braves are hitting 245, 12th in the league. They're ninth in runs and tied with Arizona for third in homers. 36-year veteran Tim Cheetah has the plate. I'm going to check that. That might be 26. I might have written that down wrong. Yeah, 26. Tim has not been around that long, but he's very good, and that's ball one. Outside at 107, we're underway. Michael Bourne hitting 296 overall, on base percentage 350. And for the Braves in 48 ball games, 280 since coming over from Houston. Deep short, Desmond, the backhand, he can plant and fire, and does so perfectly. Nothing routine about that at all. Well, that'll wake you up on a day game after a night game. Second pitch of the game, you get a bullet to your backhand side. And it's one of the fastest runners in baseball. Good backhand, good set, good throw by Desmond. That'll bring in Martin Prado riding a 10-game hitting streak after he had one of those key first-inning hits last night. So the Braves lead St. Louis by three, San Francisco by five in the wild card. If they win three of their five remaining games, it doesn't matter what those other ball clubs do. Nats are trying to keep them from doing that. And Prado hitting 265 is up. Well, there's a lot of celebrating last night in baseball. Congratulations to the Arizona Diamondbacks, winners of the West. Congratulations to the Milwaukee Brewers, winners of the Central. And I'll tell you what, partner, I don't know if you got to hear it, but Bob Euchre had one of the best home run calls I've heard in a long time last night on Ryan Braun's jack. Goosebump moment in Milwaukee. Well, well deserved by that ball club. That is sharply hit. Ryan Zimmerman right there. Two outs and a couple of ground ball outs for Chin Ming Wong. A couple of crisp ground ball outs for Chen Ming Wong. So Nats didn't take infield today, just strapping it on at 105. And all of a sudden, you're getting tested early, but that's a sign of a good infielder. Ryan Zimmerman, Ian Desmond. No infield, no BP. You're ready to play right from the get-go. Chipper Jones on base twice last night. A base hit, a walk, two runs scored. Good sinker right there. Target away. Pudge setting up right on the edge. Chipper has a career homer against Wong. Three for nine overall. Chin Ming trying to beat Atlanta for the first time in five starts. Look at that changeup. I think that's been the difference the last couple of starts for Wong. The good slider, the good changeup combination. So 
Maybe that's the last to come when you have the kind of surgery that he had. It's a good show of arm strength that he's been able to get that slider out in front and that changeup out in front. And that is just 84 right across the outside corner. One, two, three for Chin Ming Wong. First inning. Man's best friend. Number 11, hoping to do some damage against Brandon Beachy. Has the number three hitter in the Nats lineup today, following Desmond and Dan Keel. And a little further down, Danny Espinosa, who sits safely now in 11 of his last 12 games. To the tune of 378, a lot of extra base hits, so these slugging numbers are piling up. And Danny suddenly has come out of his funk, and he is swinging the bat extremely well down the stretch. Brandon Beachy. Third career start against the Nats. He's 1-0, 25-year-old right-hander, 7-2, making his 25th start. He's in the middle of a four-game losing streak. Last time out, he lost to the Mets 7-5, went just four and a third, where he threw 105 pitches, gave up four runs on five hits. He struck out eight and walked five. Ian Desmond. On base twice last night, couple of singles in five trips, hitting 251. And in 36 games, leading off 303. And he and the rest of the Nats are going to see a fastball slider, curveball change from Beachy. He likes to throw his fastball. We saw in Atlanta, he'll move it in, move it out, up, down. Good command, usually. There's that little spell of wildness here late. He ranks second amongst major league rookie pitchers with 160 strikeouts. And he owns the Braves rookie strikeout record for the modern era dating back to 1900. Some high heat right there at 91. Desmond can't catch up with it. He trails only Bill Stemmeyer for the franchise record of 239. And that was for the Boston Bean Eaters <laughs> in 1886. And I was a big fan of Stemmeyer. I thought, you know, after his rookie year. <laughs> He just kind of fell off a flash in the pan, but he had good stuff. And now he goes low, changing Desmond's eye level and striking him out. Set the defense for the Braves behind Brandon Beachy today. Prado born in Hayward in the outfield. Wilson and Jones on the left side. Ugla and Freeman on the right side. And Brian McCann in the squad. Day game after a night game. Pennant race baseball. And by the way, simultaneously in St. Louis, the Cubs and the Cardinals are underway. Early game there, but running minute by minute along with this one. Here's Rick Ankiel. Former net Alfonso Soriano dealing a fatal blow to St. Louis last night with a three-run homer late. And Ankiel lays off the pitch up and away. Two balls, no strikes. 
Rick's been on a pretty good streak himself over the last three weeks, 18 ball games, hitting 291. And you hit it on the head last night, FP. It's all about knowledge of the strike zone and plate discipline for Rick. Now that's a, a fastball taken, but I'm not sure he could have done much with that. So it's a good take. Off speed, strike two. Foul tip, and it's into the glove of Brian McCann. Beachy strikes out two to start the game. Pretty good jump on that fastball right there, 93 miles an hour. I mean, you talk to the Braves people, they rave about Brandon Beachy and the life of his fastball. It's one of those fastballs that he's not throwing through the catcher to the catcher. Sometimes he's throwing it by the hitter. He just got good extension. He gets it out in front. And it's one of those fastballs that's very deep. Zimmerman at 284. Three at bats between these two, the pitcher and the batter, and Ryan's had hits in two of them. He waits for that one and hits the ball to right. Short of the track, it's Hayward. And a 1-2-3 for Wong and for Beachy. Afternoon off to a quick start. year about Chen Ming Wong and his starts and getting through the first inning today pretty good Michael Bourne second pitch of the game a bullet to the backhand to Ian Desmond so one ground ball check Martin Prado hard ground ball to Ryan Zimmerman two ground balls check and how about Chipper Jones on a backdoor slider for strike three check so an average of 386 against Chen Ming Wong in the first inning but today it was goose eggs eight pitches five strikes what a good start here's Dan Ugla And Wong will get the inside edge with that one. It's a ball and a strike. Ugly hitting the heaviest 234 in baseball this year with 35 home runs and 80 RBIs. Three for five with a homer against Wong and three RBIs. Pretty good job of getting him on his hands right there for strike two. 
Well, anytime you got a sinker working and you see the opposition's right handed hitters hitting the ball off their leg, you know it's a good sinker. But the slider hasn't slid yet for Chen Ming Wong. It's kind of spinning in there. So keep an eye on that. Target away as Pudge leans outside. A ball on the inner half, but Zimmerman's got it, and from near the bag, perfect throw. Ryan Zimmerman looking great over at third base. We talked about being ready. And anytime you have Chen Ming Wong and his sinker on the mound, if you're an infielder, you know you're going to get a lot of action. Backhand side, get on top, good throw. Anytime you go toward foul territory as a third baseman, you see how he threw that ball right over the top? You yeah. got to get that backspin on it. You get the side spin, it'll run up the line. The longer the throw, the higher your release point. There's Brian McCann. Had a big hit in the fifth inning, drove in a couple with a double that really changed the ball game, made a 3 1 game, a 5 1 affair. But he's been struggling since being hurt 171 in 33 games since returning to the Braves. Who, by the way, gets some good news. Alfonso Soriano singles a run home top of the first inning in St. Louis against Kyle Loesch. Well hit. McCann stays on that ball. Hits it extremely hard. He's now 5 out of 10 against Chin Ming Wong. That'll bring in Freddie Freeman. A couple of singles. RBI last night. He's driven in 75. It's a good approach by McCann. I feel like if you're a left-handed hitter and you try to pull Chen Ming Wong, you're in for a long day. But if you take what he gives you, that sinker away as a lefty, and just serve it into left, maybe think about driving the ball through the shortstop into the left center field gap, you can have a good day if you get him up, if you elevate him and look for something belt high. Well, he's pulled the string on a couple of hitters early in the ball game very effectively. And that's the earliest I've seen him go to the changeup. He must have a good feel for it today. He's thrown a couple of dandies. Well, that one to Chipper Jones for strike two is a beauty. Before he got him looking with that slider. McCann, not a running threat, very close to the bag with a short lead and a 1 1 pitch. And Pudge is going to go have a talk with Chen Ming Wong. And I think this is about shaking off crash. He put down change up right there and Wong shook to the fastball in and Pudge is seeing something in Freddie Freeman's swing. It's where he wants to go soft. And I think the reason also you're seeing so many off speed pitches from Chen Ming Wong early in the game Pudge likes the off speed. He is not afraid to call slider and fastball count, change up and fastball count. Another change up right there. That was what that talk was about. Hey, you got a good change up going. These guys are all over the heater right now. Let's stay soft. And Pudge is telling Tim Cheetah right now. Can you believe he shook me off? <laughs> Seriously, I've been doing this a long time and this guy's shaking me off in the first inning. When Pudge caught his first game, Tim Cheetah had been in the league four years. So there's a <laughs> lot of experience behind that plate. Cheetah 26 years and Pudge 22. 2-2 Two -two pitch. That's going to be a called strike on the outside corner. Similar to the pitch he threw to Chipper Jones last inning. Well, let's see. I think Chen Ming Wong caught a break right here. We'll see what pitch track has to say, but Pudge setting up off the plate. Yeah. Pretty good frame. Got the call. Two outs. And Jack Wilson, the hitter. Wilson hit that smash that handcuffed Ryan Zimmerman first inning last night. Went 0 for 4. And McCann's running. 
Is that a straight steal? I mean, he's out by a mile. See, that's a catcher wanting to steal off Pudge so he can put it on his resume. Pudge Rodriguez, how about this? 11 for 23 now, caught stealing this year. Saturday of the regular season and the Nets second from last home game call Luna for up to 70% off all flooring at 877-241-LUNA shop smart shop Luna active career leaders Derek Jeter of course over 3,000 recently Pudge hanging in there at 2842 one ahead of Omar Vizquel and Vizquel said he'd like to be playing somewhere next year Davey Johnson said before the game, I really enjoy watching Pudge Rodriguez behind the plate. The way he handles the staff. And today working effectively so far with Chin Ming Wong. Here's Michael Morse. He's got to know him very well lately. Pudge always on the top step, sitting right next to Davey Johnson, picking his brain every single night. They say great players don't usually turn out to be good managers. I think Davey Johnson and Pudge Rodriguez will both be exceptions to that rule eventually. I think Kurt Gibson is too. I saw a yeah. stat today where the only former MVPs to win a division were Joe Torre and Yogi Berra, and now Kurt Gibson added to that list. That's Tall Cotton. And the 0-2 with a target away. Morris reaching, and he strikes out. Three of the first four struck out swinging by Brandon Beachy, 163 strikeouts now in just over 136 innings. He was drafted as a non-drafter, rather signed as a non-drafted free agent by the Braves back in July of 08. Out of Indiana Wesleyan University. Really not that far from where Jason Wirth has his roots in central Illinois, Springfield area. And Jason steps in now with that 20 home run mark reached again. He's hit 10 since the All-Star break. And 3 of 8 with a homer, 2 RBIs against Beachy. He told me the other day that he wants to steal 4 more bases too and be 20-20 this year. And he thinks after what he went through early and where he's gotten to now that that would be a good season for him, all things considered. Taking all the way on 2-0, and oh, and now it's ball three. Danny Espinosa swinging a hot bat. Man, this ball club has him and Worth swinging well at the same time. They're really on to something behind Zimmerman and Morris with Desmond setting the table. And a four-pitch walk. Jason Worth, 10th in the league 
with 72 walks now in the year. And I would believe that he will be running here sometime in this sequence. Suddenly, Peachy falls behind again. And get him in a stretch. He was way too quick to the plate on that pitch for Jason Worth to go anywhere. Next national steal will be number 100. And for Worth, it'll be his 94th. That's a great percentage, 87 percent. And now it's 2-0 and oh worth. Started, then stopped. Now, Beachy's too quick. I mean, he's trying to get a jump right now, and he's trying to get a read, but after six straight balls, I think maybe you hang out for a couple of pitches and make Brandon Beachy get back in the strike zone. You don't want to give the Braves an out right here. And all of a sudden, a pitcher who walked five guys his last start and threw over 100 pitches in four and a third has lost the strike zone. And he goes soft on two and zero. Oh. No score early. Nats hunting their first base hit. Danny Espinosa's had a ton of those lately, and he's two and five, two four five career against Beachy with Marrero on deck. Worth inching out just a little bit further with that lead. 2 1 runner in count. I think if it gets to 2 2, that's more of a running count because it's an off speed count. You don't want to be stealing a base in an obvious fastball count. Although the 2 0 pitch was off speed to Danny Espinosa. As a base runner, you want to go on pitches that you think are going to be off speed to get you that extra step, especially when you have a guy as quick as Beachy to the plate. And that changes the at bat. Looked like it could have been ball three. Danny swings and misses, and the count's 2 2. The aforementioned Chris Marrero batting a very respectable 275 so far. Worth is on the move, and that ball gets away, and that will be his 17th steal of the year. See, 2-2 two -two count, a better count to go off speed right there in the dirt, and that's why Jason Worth's percentage is so high. Very smart base runner. You don't want to go 2-1 because you know it's a fastball count. So you wait till a two-strike count, and you get an off-speed pitch. So right here, pretty good jump, and it would have been close at second base, but he got a curveball down the dirt. McCann couldn't handle it. Stolen base, three away from 20. And a good take by Danny. So he works for the walk. Two free passes in a row. And the Nats have something going here with Chris Marrero. Chris Marrero cracking me up last night in the clubhouse after the game talking about his at bat off Craig Kimbrell. He said he just buckled me with the slider. It was one of the best sliders I've seen in a long time and I just bet fastball. And said, I'm swinging at this pitch no matter where it is. I got a strike. Closed my eyes and hit an absolute bullet to right field. And I think you talk about it all the time. A guy that throws 99, sometimes you just have to say as a hitter, I'm going to swing right here, and I'm betting on a strike. And that's what he did. Got himself a hit. And Beachy very preoccupied with Jason Worth at first and at second now. With a right-handed batter in there, it's Dan Ugla's job to stay in proximity to that bag so Worth can't get a third of the way to third base just with his leadoff. That'll be in there on the count's 0-1. And you know who likes that the most? 
Chris Marrero. Oh, yeah. That's where he likes to hit the ball the other way. Worth coming way off the bag and then forcing Beachy to step off. See, that's one of those where he's shuffling, shuffling, getting a big jump. And if Beachy picks up his foot right here, he's got the bag ripped. But he held it long enough to where Worth was too far out there, got uncomfortable. Infielders yelling step off, and that's what Beachy did. Evidently, home is where he likes it. He joined the Nats on a road trip. Cincinnati, then Atlanta. Chris has driven in nine runs while hitting 275. Peachy taking a lot of time between pitches here. And Marrero rips it up the middle. Jason Worth will score. Nats are on the board. And Chris Marrero with his 10th big league RBI. How about that when the count had gone to 0-2? Good fight, good battle, big hits. one nothing Nats. And you know what? Chris Marrero's days of riding buses in the minor leagues are over, for me at least. He's a big leaguer, and he will be a big leaguer next year. He keeps getting big hits. He's great with runners in scoring position. His defense has been spectacular at first after a shaky start in game one in Cincinnati. So his minor league days are numbered, and his days on our minor league report here at Masson are over. I mean, you never know what happens in the winter, who you go out and get, but I feel like what he's done here this last month, I talk about it all the time. He's taken advantage of an opportunity. His September is reminding me of Ian Desmond's two years ago. Desmond came up, hit 280, four homers, a couple of handfuls of RBIs. Showing some real pop in the bat, hit, hitting the ball all over the ballpark. And as Ian prepares for his next debut, Chris Marrero, two years later, impressing us very well here in September. And a big spot for Pudge, who loves to go the other way. That's why Freeman plays about 12, 15 feet off the line at first. When you haven't played in a long time, and trust me, nobody knows this better than I do. When you get up there, 90 looks like 190. Hmm. It's just hard to simulate velocity and batting practice in the cage. I don't care if you're hitting off a machine that's throwing hard. You know, when you play every single day, you train your eyes to where 94, 95, 96. You can slow it down because you see it every day. But when you don't see it every day and you get your first start since July 4th, the game's moving fast. Pretty good 0-2 pitch by Beachy, who missed outside. Pretty good rip. This is Pudge's 43rd game. He's had a, just 119 at bats on the year. Well over 2,500 games behind the plate now. Off speed gets away. I never saw a signal from the umpire that that was a foul tip. Brian McCann never bothered to pick up the ball. So what's going on here? Danny Espinosa went over to third base. There I don't know was what, no call from Tim Cheetah on that. And I don't know why Chris Marrero is standing on first base. I mean, you go to second. If it's a foul tip, they send you back. Make them send you back like they're sending Danny Espinosa back to second base right now. It was a foul ball on a hop, a little cricket for Pudge. Yeah. 
Okay. She punch fouls that off. Vladimir Guerrero, that's a double in the gap. <laughs> One ball, two strikes, way inside. Nats extending Beachy here, 13 pitches, first inning. He's already thrown 22 here and has only one out. Three batters without contact will add up to a lot of pitches. And that was the Moore strikeout, followed by the Worth and Espinosa walks. And a great take by Pudge now to fill the count. How about this at bat? And how about last night? Pudge came up for a pinch hit appearance, got a standing ovation from the crowd. We didn't expect it. I know he didn't expect it. But like I said last night, when you're kind of the missing man on the bench and you've had a Hall of Fame career, that makes you feel wanted. That makes you feel appreciated. A special moment at the ballpark last night when he stepped in the box. This is good stuff. What the Nats are doing here in the second inning is going to pay off later this afternoon, especially if Washington can have the lead. Because the key to the beating the Braves is stay ahead of him so that O'Flaherty, Venters, and Kimbrell stay seated in that bullpen. So really, FP, you've got six innings to take care of that. Yep. Big step toward it possibly right here. 3-2 with one out. When the Nats score first, they are playoff caliber. Look at that winning percentage. Amazing. We'll forget about the bottom line because it doesn't apply today. Runners are going. Pudge is swinging a miss. And the inning is over on a strike them out, throw them out double play. Pitcher on deck, so Davey Johnson rolled the dice right there. And the Nats will settle for a run in the bottom of the second on the RBI by Marrero. Get at least a base hit per game, it seems. 26 hits in 27 games. Visit FCA.org, the association for IT pros. Marrero has the RBI, and here's Debbie with a sideline report. Well, Chin Ming Wong has shown so much determination, and Davey Johnson said he's really been impressed with his strong will throughout his comeback. If you saw him in December uh, a year ago, you'd say no, no chance. Um, but through his tenacity, he's come back and uh, 
he's a fine pitcher. I, I love seeing him work. He's got he's got his work cut out today. This this ball club is and it's a must win for them, and uh, they're swinging the bats good. Chengming Wang, of course, will be a free agent after the season, and Davies said, too, he would like to see him remain with the Nationals, and Chengming has told us on several occasions he would like to remain a National as well. Bob, FP. Well, we're all liking what we're seeing right now. Well, I think he feels a certain loyalty to the organization for how they stuck with him yeah. through that whole, whole ordeal, the surgery, the rehab. I think they've actually initiated some contract extension talks that loyalty thing is good to hear about Jack Wilson the hitter by the way reminiscent of what St. Louis did years ago when they picked up Chris Carpenter who was injured at the time as a free agent from Toronto but they gave him a contract they paid him he didn't pitch for an entire year that's paid dividends and he recently re-upped with them without even checking on what was out there with other ball clubs so FP a couple of stories about how loyalty can indeed be a two-way street in an industry where that doesn't happen that often. That's why it's so refreshing to see. 2-1 to Wilson, who was at the plate when Brian McCann was gunned out. Hot shot, and Desmond on the backhand side just couldn't make that connection. So Wilson's aboard, leading off the third with their eight and nine hitters coming up, Hayward and then Beachy. Yeah, fastball that started away and ran back into Jack Wilson. He was all over it. Hit a couple of balls hard last night. Made a couple of nifty plays at shortstop as well. And Desmond couldn't handle the in-between hop. Hayward. And this might be some of the best news for the Braves of anything. Starting to come alive here in the last two weeks of the season. He had two hits here last night. He has a five game hitting streak and he's eight for his last 18. Right now, the Braves would start in Milwaukee in the playoffs, and the Diamondbacks would have to go to Philadelphia. And if you have to go to Milwaukee to play the first couple games of a series, you better have your offensive game in line to try to slug with those guys at home. And Hayward would be good news for the Braves. Pretty healthy rip and the counts one and two. Wong had him under that ball. Top of the third, 1 0 Nats on a Chris Marrero RBI in the second after two walks and a stolen base by Jason Worth. I don't want to report anything erroneously, but I think I just saw the sun come out. I'm pretty <laughs> sure there was a shadow on the field. We're waiting for Punxsutawney <laughs> Phil to poke his head out of a camera well somewhere. Two balls and two strikes. If we do see the sun today, that means there's five more days of baseball, at it's, least for the regular season. There's breaking news around here when you see the sun later. Hayward pops it up. Out behind second base. Desmond is under it, and Keel will call him off. And that's the first out here in the third. That'll bring in Brandon Beachy, the pitcher. Kind of funny, last night we shut down Bob's bootleg weather about two months ago. And a fan emailed me yesterday and said, What does Bob's discount radar show <laughs> for tonight's game with the rain coming? <laughs> Not even close. How quickly they forget. Bob's discount radar. After all that hard work during rain delays. That was a good shot right there. The guy's got of Jason Worth giving Ricky and Keel his sunglasses. As Rick had to fight off the sun right there in that pop-up. Beachy taking a stab at that bun attempt. He has six sacrifices on the air. Brandon Beachy is from Kokomo, Indiana. And as we mentioned, 
not heavily scouted. Third baseman and a closer at Indiana Wesleyan University. And now a small school success into the big leagues. Career record of seven and four to start off his career. Then he stabs another one. No balls, two strikes. And a lot of managers with the pitcher will leave the bunt sign on even with two strikes. See, and Keel fighting that pop up from Jason Hayward. And all of a sudden, can you see? No, here you see. So sharing is caring in the outfield for the Nats. I think his hat, maybe his hat needed him. Gosh, what a day. Team loyalty, sharing sunglasses. <laughs> Just baseball friends everywhere. A little bit outside. This is why Freddy Gonzalez wants the pitcher to keep bunting. He doesn't want that double play. He wants Michael Bourne to bat whenever he can. That was front door almost hit him as he dove over to bunt. Now it's gone to ball three. It's time just to lay one in there. Yeah, using up too many bullets right now to get this bunt. Throw a strike right down the middle. Field the ball. Get an out. Still early bunting position for Beachy. Runner going. And he swings and fouls it. For the second out, and Wilson will have to go back to first base. Top of the order coming up. Michael Bourne, with his speed, could play point guard for anybody in America. For the latest news on Georgetown men's basketball, including ticket information, visit guhoyas.com. And during the season, follow the Hoyas on Masson, the official regional sports network of Georgetown Hoops. Michael Bourne on a hot shot to Desmond retired first time. That ball hit very well to center. And Keel racing for it. He's got it. Right back over the bill of his cap. That's what a good pair of shades and some speed will do for you. He put him on. He ranged all the way to right center field on the track. And that ball was tailing back. And he reached over his head. What a play. All that Chen Ming Wong needs if he keeps getting plays like this behind him. Michael Bourne got all of this. Rick Ankeel kind of broke to the gap, but he got inside of the ball. Bourne did, and it tailed back over to his left shoulder. 
I mean, where we're sitting right now, we thought that Rick Ankiel overran this ball. Great adjustment at the end. And Michael Bourne, you were robbed, and we've seen that from Rick Ankiel all season long. Great jumps in the outfield, great athletic ability. And, folks, when the fence is approaching like that and you're running full speed, that is not an easy play. So number 24 right there looking like an old 24 that used to play for the Giants in center field. Great play, Rick Ankiel. Might be the second best play we've seen in the outfield this year. Hard to dispute the Bernardina play months ago. On Mike Stanton. That was outstanding. Chin Ming Wong, 0 for 17 this year, still hunting his first major league hit. And that'll be the first out, bottom of the third, on Brandon Beachy's fifth strikeout. PNC Minor League Report solutions that help you achieve your financial goals. PNC for the achiever in you. RBI leaders at Double A Tyler Moore, 90. High A, Destin Hood down in Potomac, 83. Jesus Valdez, Double A, Triple A. David Friedas, Hagerstown, and Chris Marrero. We'll just say that he has 10 right here. He's not going back to the minor leagues. That's why I'm crossing out his name right there in the minor league report. Just don't cross out the sponsor ever, okay? <laughs> <laughs> that is something I would probably end up doing. Ian Desmond struck out swinging first time. That one hit the ground and came up and hit him. That might have got him in a spot where you don't want to ever get hit. Mike McGowan from the dugout over to help. Now, even as an infielder, you wear a protective cup, but sometimes it can get up underneath there, and it's not a good feeling. So we saw the other day in Philadelphia, he had a bug in his eye, and he swung, and he got a double. I'm wondering if he lets it rip right here. Counts 1-1. One, one. He tried to rip. Rick and Keel after Desmond here. Rick the reason. The Nats still have the lead. And Desmond strikes out. Six Ks out of eight outs for Brandon Beachy. And Rick and Keel is next. Here comes the sun. Finally. Conditions changing by the moment here. Especially for the guys facing back toward home plate. It's tough when you're hitting in a day game, too. Your eyes adjust to the clouds, and all of a sudden the sun comes out. It's almost like when you walk out of a movie theater and you're squinting. I've had that happen to me in the middle of an at-bat to where it's a cloudy day. It turns into a sunny day, and all of a sudden you can't see the baseball. And Keel was ripping on 2 and 0. Oh. Nets need a base runner to get Ryan Zimmerman up to the plate here in the third. And by the way, they're moving along in St. Louis, top of the fourth. Cubs one, Cardinals nothing. St. Louis, three back of Atlanta for the wild card. Strike two.
That is right over the plate, and the Nats are gone. Beachy strikes out the side, seven Ks in three innings, but he trails. The Nats lead. Jason Worth has walked, stolen a base, and scored a run. Pitchers are matching up pretty nicely, although Wong has a big pitch advantage. And Rick Ankiel, what a third inning for him. He came in, he called off Ian Desmond on a high pop up, and he said, There's some sun in my eyes. Can I borrow your shade? Sure, dude, go ahead. Jason Worth being a good teammate because he knew that Rick Ankiel was going to make this play right here, and he'd have to use his shades. So in the sun, going toward the fence, ball tailing back over your head. And why wouldn't you celebrate a play like that? Lit up this crowd, lit up the dugout. Just another highlight reel play from Rick Ankiel. Martin Prado, top of the fourth inning, leading off. So Chin Ming Wong, those first three innings, 36 pitches, 23 strikes. Prado bounced out to Zimmerman, first time up. Three pitches last time out in six and two thirds. High quality work against the Marlins. Three runs on six hits. Didn't walk anybody and struck out five. Today, three strikeouts, no walks. Tough inning here with Chipper Jones and then Dan Ugly to follow. Zimmerman charges and he takes it on that little short hop like it's absolutely nothing for the first out. Fourth ground ball out for Wong. Catch all the action of the 2011 Major League Baseball postseason on Fox and TBS. The division series on TBS comes your way next Friday night. Season ending on Wednesday and 48 hours later, bang, playoff baseball. It just seems like yesterday I saw these Atlanta Braves in game one of the NLDS and Tim Lincecum strike out 14 of them and throw a complete game two hit shutout. Yeah, one of the Braves few bright spots in that series was the Ankeel splash home run in McCovey Cove, right? Yeah, that was a bomb. Here's Chipper struck out looking first time. Wong got him 0-2. And then threw a slider outside half.
I think it's safe to say there are two Hall of Famers. Most probably standing and squatting just feet from each other here. Pudge and Chipper. Chipper Jones, by the way, early in his career, lost an entire season to a knee injury. Did not play in 94, his first full season. Target is in. I played against Chipper Jones when he was a Richmond Brave. I played against him in A ball. And when he was in Richmond, he was having trouble throwing the ball from shortstop. They moved him to center field. And I'll tell you what, one of the better center fielders I had ever seen at that time. Great speed, yep. going to get balls in the gaps. He had a tremendous arm, throwing guys out. So he went from shortstop to center fielder to Hall of Fame third baseman. Yeah, and he did play outfield for a while in the major leagues before they moved him back to third. It's outside from Wong. In his career, he's hit 308 times, won a batting title, 30 homers six times, the most ever 45 in 99 for him and he said he had 100 RBIs eight straight years from 96 to 03. Oh that's a good looking pitch and it's three and two. Remember last night looked like Strasburg had him struck out. Didn't get a call then gave up a hit. Tried to run it back off his hit. Nearly perfect. Pudge stuck the landing, didn't get the call. Pitch track brought to you by Verizon, America's largest and most reliable wireless network. 3 2 with one out, bases empty. And Chipper Jones wants that pitch right back. Got a slider right out over the plate, all over it, fouled it off. That'll make you take a walk around the batter's box. You get your pitch, you miss it. And check out this. It was an 83 mile an hour slider that just didn't slide. Three two again and Jones will just stroke that ball out to left center. Might be thinking about two here. He'll make the big round and go back as Michael Morse got to the ball. So Chipper Jones second base hit in this series. That'll bring in Dan Ugla. Bouncing ball to Zimmerman, first time up. I remember the last time Chen Ming Wong faced Dan Ugla here. He threw that bunt play down the right field line right before Ugla came up, and then he threw him a slider out over the plate, and Ugla got it. Ugla got that one and so did Ryan Zimmerman. Ugla had a base hit and a three run homer in that game August 3rd and his bid for a hit taken away by Mr. Zimmerman. And that ball was absolutely roasted but he hit it to the wrong guy. Check out the reaction time right here. Boom bullet glove up. I mean almost by him right. He took that ball to left field. The thing that impresses me most about Ryan Zimmerman as we watch him play every single day he's always ready for the baseball. Sometimes as an infielder, the ball surprise you. It never surprises Ryan Zimmerman. <laughs> On his toes, anticipating the baseball every single pitch, every single game. Dodge Grand Caravan on the Exmo. Visit Dodge.com today. Two outs now, and Brian McCann, the hitter. And like Chipper Jones, he had a good left-handed approach to Wong first time up, singled hard to left field. Cold strike and it's one and one. And then he'll catch the outer half just under the ceiling of the strike zone. One and two.
Target in on 2 2. Long misses on the other side. Longest inning. 19 pitches so far. And Keel playing out very deep in center, checking the sun with those shades with his glove a moment ago. And a 3 2 with the runner going. This has popped up right side. Pudge and Marrero. Pudge will take it right in front of the screen. And the Braves are gone. Top of the fourth. Big guns coming up. Zimmerman, Morse, and Jason Worth. 1 0 Nets. We saw Jason Worth and Rick Ankeo waiting for the presidents, and then the entire bullpen gets into the fray. Now this takes ambush to a whole new level. The and whole bullpen out there, they're trying to let Teddy win. Teddy gets all <laughs> hugged up with Abe. <laughs> <laughs> and guess what, folks? For the first time in president's race history, a player crosses the finish line. It's Jason Worth, not a single president. That was the best race ever. Nice. There's a couple of presidents seeing a trainer right now. A whole new twist. <laughs> that thing for a while looked like a Republican debate. Bottom of the fourth inning. Zimmerman, Morrison, Worth coming up. Only in Washington. Ryan Zimmerman flat out to right first time. 0 1 pitch. I mean, we've seen some good stuff lately. This ball club's got character, it's got personality. Between the Smurfs for the rookies, the lottery in Philadelphia the other night in the bullpen, where they changed all the numbers, it's a crazy winning numbers, and then. Today with the president's race, these guys have fun. 0-2 pitch, and Ryan Zimmerman had his mind made up. I'm taking this guy away. Zimmerman on in this series for the second time. He's two for six. And now you've got some more big boppers coming up in Morrison Worth. Let's watch the race one more time. Jason Worth getting a handful of schnoz right there. And I guess if you're going to grab something on a president, the nose would be the easiest thing to grab. <laughs> I tell you, tall Tom Jefferson has never been treated that way. That could be face masking, I guess. Man down. Oh, my gosh. I mean, this guy's getting roughed up in the corner. Look at that back in the corner. That's like, that's like going down the high in the corner for a Capitals game. Getting checked into the boards. And as far as I know, for the first time ever, not a single champion. He's worth took the tape. 
bullpen guys giving them the business down there in the corner. <laughs> Worth grabbing a handful of beak. Short lead by Zimmerman. Ooh, Michael Morse got one on the inner edge. And the count's 0 2. You might remember Beachy first time up, got ahead of Michael, and then got him on a hook away. So Morse will have to protect that outer half. Zimmerman did a nice job of it. That ball gets away. No swing. Already been signaled by Marty Foster. And on a wild pitch, Zimmerman down to second base. There's the curveball in the dirt right there. McCann tried to block it. But you see where it hits in front of the plate. That's a tough one to keep in front. And Morris will pop it up left side. Jipper flips down his glasses. He'll yield to Wilson for the first out. Hollywood Casino, Charlestown races West Virginia and VIP seats. MVP eats every game day at the all new Skybox Sports Bar. By rookies, all time strikeouts per nine innings if you've pitched at least 125. And look at some of the company Brandon Beachy is in. That's impressive. We talked about it earlier. He set a franchise record for the modern era. 160 coming into today. And the all time franchise record of 239 was set in 1886 by Bill Stemmeyer of the Boston Bean Eaters. I wonder what the strike zone was like back then. It was probably if the catcher caught it in the air, it was a strike. Worth walks, stole a base, scored on the Marrero hit first time. And he'll take that one off the plate inside. Jason averaging 24 home runs the last four seasons. So he reached 20 last night. So look at that one over the plate. So Danny Espinoza watching Worth with Zimmerman at second base, one out. I'm reading something that says that. There was a time in baseball where the strike zone was wherever the batter wanted it to be. He could ask for pitches above or below the belt. I'm in the mood for a low one. Give it to me. Is it like kickball? You ask for baby bounces? Evidently. Bill Stemmeyer was 22 and 18 that year for the Bean Eaters. 22 and 18. He threw 348 innings. He gave out 300 hits. And he struck out 239. And Jason Wirth's on base again. Convergence on the pitch track. I thought this was down. Let's check out what pitch track had to say. Convergence and Citrix, the winning team to desktop virtualization. Call the experts at 301-860-1960 or visit convergencetech.us. By the way, in 1886, <laughs> you had to take seven balls out of the strike zone to get a walk. Well... Stemmeyer walked 144 that year. I can see why. Seven balls? Come on. And by the way, before that, the catcher didn't have to call or catch the third strike on the bounce. I mean, he could catch it. One bounce, two bounces. Didn't have to tag the hitter. Didn't have to throw to first. Kind of interesting when you go way back. And we talked about this, I think, last year. The bags used to be in foul territory at first and third. Then they straddled the line, and then they put them entirely into fair territory because there were too many arguments. 
And people knew how to argue back in 1890, I tell you. Espinoza, sun blazing. There's another ball in the dirt. Zimmerman to third, Worth down to second. And the wild pitch is killing Brandon Beachy right here in the fourth inning. The first one allowed Ryan Zimmerman to get to second base, and this one allows both runners to advance with one out. So a big mistake right there once again by Beachy. Now Danny Espinoza finds himself in a great position to hit ahead in the count 2-0. Runners on second and third one out. And Freddy Gonzalez electing to play his middle infield. At least his shortstop back. Dan Ugla back too. Espinoza had a big rip. Well, Cheetah took a direct hit right there. I wonder if he's okay. Man, that was serious, folks. Wow. I mean, you can see him buckle right there. He's almost out on his feet for a second. The trainer's got to come out and look because he almost went down. I don't think he's all there. All three umpires, Jeff Nelson, Bill Welke coming to his aid with Marty Foster. And the home trainer has the responsibility to take care of the umpires. I mean, if he wasn't in a good stance right there, he goes down. Because when that ball hit him, you could see him start to buckle and almost go. And he was just kind of staring out into nowhere. And I guarantee you that's a concussion. That's one of the, the more violent hits I've ever seen an umpire take. That was a direct shot. Twenty six years at the major league level behind the plate and around the bases for Tim Cheetah. He still doesn't look all there. Bottom line here is Nats have a chance for a big inning. Leading one nothing second and third one out Danny Espinosa walked his first time. And that's ball three. With right handed hitting. Chris Marrero on deck. And on an off speed pitch, Danny out ahead of it, over the top of it, counts full. And see, in this situation, you get to a 3-1 count. Okay, you swung through it. That was for you. Now, this one's for the ball club. You have to shorten up right here and put the ball in play. And it's not often that a team's going to give you a free RBI if you can just stay up the middle with a ground ball. It's a lot easier said than done, but as a hitter right now, you have to shorten up, look for the top half of the baseball, and think about hitting the ball on the ground. 3-2. That's a base hit left center. Two runs will score. Danny Espinoza puts the Nationals on top, 3 nothing. An outstanding rookie season is coming to a very strong end here. Yeah, and that's exactly what I'm talking about, shorten up your swing. Look how short that is. That's such a good approach by Danny Espinoza right there. Didn't get big, made the adjustment off of a swing and a miss, put the ball in play. RBI's number 65 and 66 for Espinosa. Still only one out in the inning, and here's Marrero. Espinosa on the move, swing and a miss, and he's got that back stolen easily. Danny Espinosa with his 15th. Five away from 2020. He can do it. And a great time for Davey Johnson to turn that runner loose right after a couple of runs scored. Great jump. Great speed. If they let him go and they give him the green light, he can steal five more this year. I know it. Yeah. 
Marrero rips it. Chipper Jones, unbelievable play to his left. Just another ball on the barrel for Chris Guerrero with a runner in scoring position. How about this approach? Boom, bullet, one hop. Chipper Jones stepping a dive. And we've seen him do that a million times in his career. Nice play. On his toes, one step. Wow. Lots of time to make the play once you glove it. Nats are swinging the bats pretty well right now. And it'll be up to Pudge Rodriguez. They will pass him and pitch to Wong here. Freddy Gonzalez knows he can't afford to fall any farther behind. That was nice. You see what Pudge did right there? He, he turned to Tim Cheetah right before he ran to first base and asked him if he was okay. Yeah, Pudge doesn't miss a thing out there. Knows how to play the game, knows how to manage the game, whether he's got the gear on or not. Chin Ming Wong struck out swinging first time up. Rips it to the upper deck. Did you hear the crowd reaction? On the they foul? loved it. Yeah, the, they loved it. The foul ball. <laughs> that is a fair ball. Despinoza scores. Pudge to third. Chin Ming Wong, first major league hit. Obviously, first major league RBI. The Nationals lead four to nothing. And how about that reaction on a base hit and an RBI from Chen Ming Wong? We'll throw the ball out, and we'll get to see our favorite guy in the dugout, Major League Baseball sticker guy. Good hack right there. Fastball up and another hard hit ball off Brandon Beachy. Down the line, just inside, just fair. First big league hit, first big league RBI. They talk about helping yourself out. Way to go, Chen Ming Wong. And Trent Jewett is fired up. And so are we. Top of the order now, Ian Desmond, the eighth nat to bat in this so far. Third inning, Bob the sticker guy back to work. And Desmond takes a big rip. He came up to me in the clubhouse the other day and he said, FP, I'm... Major League Baseball sticker guy. He didn't even tell me his name. And everyone's trying to tell me his name, and I don't want to know. He's just Major League Baseball sticker guy to me. Desmond right off the end of the bat. And Beachy will shovel it to Freddie Freeman. Great inning for the Nats, though. Three runs, couple of walks, three hits, 4 nothing Washington.
Strasburg Strikes Again t-shirt given away tomorrow by Geico. And the $2 tickets, limited supply in effect again. Drink special two-for-one Coca-Colas to keep you cool for a day game. Quinternationals.com slash Fan Alley. While supplies last, some restrictions apply. And, of course, at the ballpark today, as we do every day, our DynCorp International Troop Recognition. Waving those caps as we pay tribute to the men and women who put their lives on the line to keep us safe and free. At DynCorp International, we serve today for a better tomorrow. Strasburg smiling, liking what he's seeing. Everybody in the dugout coming alive for Chin Ming Wong. We got that base hit, giving himself a four-run lead. Another cool moment at the field. Chen Ming came off the field to a standing ovation as he came back to the dugout. Good stuff. Freeman, Wilson, and Hayward for the Braves in the top of the fifth inning. They're in the sixth now at St. Louis. And Chicago still leads St. Louis 1-0. Rodrigo Lopez pitching for the Cubs today. Two and zero. Oh. Freeman struck out looking first time up. Rodrigo Lopez is dealing through five innings. He's given up just three hits. Has had good command. Three strikeouts. Hasn't walked anybody in his last two starts. In fact, the last time he walked anybody was against the Braves September 1st. And he gets Freeman to hit the ball left center. Deep and deep and out of here. Freddie Freeman with his 21st of the year. And it's a 4-1 game. RBI number 76 for that rookie of the year candidate. And that ties Danny Espinosa for the rookie lead. This is some kind of pop right here, boy. You get something out over the plate and you drive it that part of the ballpark left-handed. I don't know that I've seen a lefty hit one out there all season long. A couple of lefties has gone into the bullpen. But to go into the red seats the other way as a left-hander, that's some serious pop. Boy, did you see him release those hands? Wow. For the Braves, 170 homers on the year. The Nats have 150. Atlanta, third in the league in that department. Nats are seventh in the long ball. We talked about it last night, Bob. Every time Danny Espinosa does something, Freddie Freeman does something. <laughs> and every time Freddie Freeman does something, Danny Espinosa does something right back. These two guys as young players, it's the game within the game, I'm telling you. It's almost like they're competing against each other. And guess what? It's going to happen for many, many years. Arodis Vizcaino and Anthony Varvaro for the Braves. In the air near the right field line. A long run for everybody. And Worth cannot quite reach the foul ball. Great effort. And he gets a standing ovation. How about that effort by Jason Worth? So Worth has to go a long way. Meaningless baseball in September? I don't think so. 
That's the one thing you could say about these guys. They played hard all season long. And they're almost playing harder the last week or so. Well, they're smelling a really good finish. Even with last night's loss, 10 of the last 13 on that W side of the ledger. 76 wins on the year. Including today, five to go. There's some dirt in there. There's some grass in there. Probably a little sweat, too. Jason Worth cleaning off the shades. Jack Wilson singled left field first time. Wong has him. One and two. And he'll bounce one well out in front of Pudge. And a bouncer that Danny Espinosa will charge with a nice big hop at the end. One out. Tomorrow here at Nationals Park, Ross Detweiler and Mike Miner. Then it's on to Florida for the Nats. Night games on Monday and Tuesday and a day game on Wednesday. We'll give you all the pitching matchups for that series as soon as they're announced. If all is right in the Nats pitching world, Steven Strasburg would take them on for the finale on Wednesday, 4 o'clock. Good-looking pitch, ball one. I'm sure that's going to be a big deal down in South Florida with all the old Marlins coming back, but is it really that big a deal when you can't even remember the name of the park because it's had about 100? <laughs> to that being the last game, and that I, I don't even know what the park's name is. Espinosa will circle behind this one. Nifty little pickup with one hand. Throw on the run with the other. And with nobody on base, Brandon Beachy will stay in the game and hit here. So at least sit down their bullpen guys or slow them down for now. Nice job of Chen Ming Wong getting back in the strike zone. Gave up a home run. Nothing to it. Couple of ground balls to second base after that. First time up, Beachy tried to bunt and struck out. And Jason Worth just gave a shout out to Chris Barrero that if I get a one hopper, I'm coming to you. Playing shallow in right field, he looks to do that. I think he did it once this year. But you always have to give your first baseman a heads up that you're thinking about doing it, so he goes to the bag on a base hit. Little tapper. Wong can't get it. Desmond can. Makes it look easy. Three ground ball outs after the home run, and that's just fine. Halfway through the game, the Nats on top, 4-1. to one. Broadcast on Masson brought to you by Verizon Wireless, America's largest and most reliable wireless network. 
Well, it was cloudy here at the ballpark. Things have cleared off nicely. Beautiful day now. And the Nats looking good after four and a half, leading four to one. Long way to go. Let's have a look at our pivotal play. It's time for the Morgan Franklin pivotal play. And we'll go back to last inning. Chen Ming Wong up. Hunting his first big league knock. Gets it inside the line, scoring Danny Espinosa. Everybody pumped up in the whole ballpark. And then how about this? Dan Ugla throwing the ball out. And he got a standing ovation right there as he's going back into the dugout. So congratulations to Chen Ming Wong pitching a good game. And he got his first major league hit. Morgan Franklin and their clients know that pivotal plays don't just happen in sports. See who's making them in business and government at PivotalPlays.com. So the game summary, Danny Espinosa having a big day with a walk and a two-run single. Brandon Beachy working long and hard through five innings now. And then Chin Ming Wong taking the mound for his fifth inning. Actually, he's worked through the fifth, so here comes Beachy. 78 pitches, 47 strikes. And he'll face Ann Keel, Zimmerman, and Morse, bottom five. And first and third one out for the Cardinals right now in the bottom of the sixth. Matt Holiday up. After a Pujols walk and a Berkman single. One nothing there. The Nats are, at least for the moment, stalling the Atlanta playoff express. Their magic number is three for the wild card. Ankeo goes up ripping and tipping. Strike one. Freddy Gonzalez teams played well on the road this year. They're five games over 500 away from Turner Field and 16 over at home. Three for strike two. Well, last inning, the only frame where he didn't strike anybody out. Nats got the bat on the ball. That's a fastball in the outside corner. Strikeout number eight for Beachy. And kill three times. It's a fastball away to Rick Ankeel, and look where Brian McCann setting up, hit the spot. Pitcher strike, perfect Con pitch. Convergence technology and Citrix experts with desktop virtualization helping companies achieve efficiency and cost reduction. Call the experts at 301-860-1960 or visit convergencetech.us. Ryan Zimmerman, one for two. <laughs> Up the middle, and Ryan Zimmerman's on again. Right field last time to start the rally straight up the middle and he's three for seven in this series. And all of a sudden Zim heating up once again. It's a curveball up in the zone right out over the plate just takes it right back up the middle doesn't try to do too much. Well he's always hit well in Florida. So a game and a half left here and then three down there Ryan could finish very strong. Michael Morris, a strikeout and a pop up.
And this is where Michael Morse would love to check in. Still flirting with that 300 mark at 303 as we speak. I mean, it's pretty much just a knock a day. I mean, a lot easier said than done. Yeah, just get one hit, Michael Morris. But we've seen him all season long just rake. And you come down to the stretch with four games left, and you're flirting right around that 300 mark. Some of Beachy's off-speed stuff has given him a problem today, understandably so. Albert Pujols just got caught in a rundown between third and home in St. Louis. Still one nothing Cubs. Second and third, two outs in the sixth inning there. 4-1 Nationals here, 2-1 to Michael, way upstairs. And they have Beachy now at 90 pitches. And he's only registered 13 outs. If this is a strike, it's going to be loud. Looking fastball, got a curve. And Morse hammers it. Jack Wilson picks it up to Ugla for a 6-4-3. Fifth inning over. Top of the order coming up for the Braves. The Nats by three. Alley weekend, 10,000 Strasburg Strikes Again t-shirts for the folks who come in first. Presented by Geico. $2 tickets and limited supply and a drink special. Two for one Coca-Colas. Twitternationals.com slash Fan Alley while supplies last. Some restrictions apply. We've got some pups in the park today. They heard about that two for one hot dog special going on. Jin Ming Wong, 72nd pitch of the day. Michael Bourne, 0 for 2. Good movement, good sink for a strike. St. Louis did not score in that sixth inning. And the Cubs still lead there, 1 0. With the Braves trailing here. Good off speed pitch by Chin Ming Wong. Pretty empty Atlanta box. Base hit by McCann in the second. Wilson in the third. In the fourth, Chipper Jones, and in the fifth, the Freddie Freeman leadoff home run. No walks, three strikeouts, pitching to contact and doing it quite well. That's right down the middle, and Michael Bourne can only walk away. For what was he looking? And he's got a couple of strikeouts like that. One to Chipper Jones, one to Freddie Freeman, and now Michael Bourne. And it's a backdoor slider that almost looks like a cutter today. Not really? a lot of break to it. Just very subtle, very late, very quick at the end. And it's a good pitch. Yeah, it's a lot like the one he threw Chipper back in the first inning. Guys are giving up on it. It's coming back for a strike. There's Martin Prado for two and a couple of bouncers to Zimmerman. That's a... 
high strike. Gorzolani has been busy lately. He's been lights out lately. Yeah, he really pitched well up in Philadelphia the other night. Pitched a couple of times in that series, effective both times, and he got a win. That's ball three upstairs. Chipper Jones one for two today. And a bounce it is short. Backhand Desmond on the run. Great throw. Kind of right across his body over strongly to Marrero. I, I like this play because he took his time. Even though Prado can run, he went to his right. And see him gather himself right there for a big strong throw over the top. That's eight ground ball outs by Wong. Four of the last five on the ground. Here's Chipper Jones. Wong really hasn't given any of the Atlanta hitters today anything they can pull with authority. Even Freddie Freeman's home run straight away slightly offset to the other side. Did a good job of getting strikes while staying away from danger zones. Kind of like that on a 2-0 pitch. It would be a wonderful idea to have that guy lead off in the seventh. Here comes number 84. Out of play, left side. And Chipper Jones will hit it out to center. Not at all deep. And Keel right there. Six more good innings by Chin Ming Wong. How well is he finishing the season?
politics coming up. So many things to talk about. The way this ball club is going right now, where do we start? Okay, pitching. Chin Ming Wong, six more good innings. If everything works out on the business side, it looks pretty good on the baseball side for this guy next year. Yeah, it's been cool for us to see where he came from in spring training. Remember when he was over in the minor league camp throwing sides and the reports were that his fastball was in the low 80s and everyone was wondering, is this guy ever going to pitch again? And for us to see from spring training to what he's doing right now and how hard he's worked to get here and how strong he's gotten, I mean, he's going to be on this team next year. Well, and that would be a good experience factor to have. I mean, not to be forgotten, this guy's played on championship teams. He's been in postseason play and pitched at a very high level with the Yankees previously. Yeah, he's used to winning, and I think his influence on the guys and just, you know, how he approaches his off days, not so much the day he pitches, but what he goes through and how much he's worked and how hard he's worked to get back here. That's well, a good example for everybody. Not bad with the bat today either. Jason Worth leads off bottom six. Nats on top, four to one. Worth a pair of walks, a stolen base, and two runs scored. I remember hearing those reports down in Vieira that his fastball is in the low 80s, and you know he's getting there. But you know, a lot of people in the organization didn't know if he was going to make it. It's just a testament to him and his work ethic and how hard he's worked. Just to get back here, we talked in his first start, just the fact that he's on the mound in the major leagues again. Way to go, Chen Ming Wong. And now, you know, he's a guy that's going to be a part of this rotation maybe next year. Worth took his shot on a fastball up. And the count's even 2-2. Danny Espinosa, then Chris Marrero in the Washington sixth. Target is in. Beachy three pitches away from 100. Wong, by the way, through 685. Nets have scored in two innings today. The Chris Marrero base it after walks to Worth and Espinosa in the second. And then Zimmerman single, Worth's walk. The big blow of the ball game. Danny Espinosa's two run single to make it 3 nothing before Chin Ming Wong gave the Nets a four run lead at that time before the Freddie Freeman home run. So Zimmerman has a couple of hits on base twice, Worth and Espinosa. And then everybody in the bottom three, Marrero, Pudge, and Wong have been on base. Three, two, and Worth will reach out and stroke that ball out of play. And this one appears to be playable for Hayward near the right field line. For the first out, bottom six. Seems like the big hits in this ball game, guys going the other way. With two strikes right here, Danny Espinosa doing a nice job of shortening his swing, taking a little bit out. And absolutely smoking a line drive to left center field for two RBIs. Number 65 and 66 on the year for Espinosa. So a 70 RBI season, very reachable for Danny. So if him and Freddie Freeman are having a little game within the game, this should be good for Danny Espinosa after Freeman hit a home run in the fifth. <laughs> yep, answering each other a lot of times this season. Rookie home run leaders. And look at Wilson Ramos on the list. How about that? The Nats have two of the top three. That's fantastic. And this should be a pretty healthy swing on a strike right here in a 2-0 count. 
And that's why you get 78. Changing him up. There was a time 20, 30 years ago in the National League where you always got a fastball on that count. <laughs> these guys have such weapons now. Change up the great equalizer these days. National League was always known as a low ball fastball league. DH came along in 73 and the American League became a high ball breaking ball league. Nobody getting the face of pitcher anymore. And now of course the umpires have been merged into one association no longer exclusive to either league. And Espinosa takes a rip on 92 and the counts full three and two. Well, you can just go back to the 90s and pitchers were trying to invent pitches because guys were kicking their heads in every night. It was, you know, the steroid era. Guys were hitting three run home runs. So now as a pitcher, you had to figure out different pitches. The front door sinker, you know, change ups when you're behind in the count. I mean, you had to get creative because if you didn't, you wouldn't last long. And I think now you're seeing the ramifications of that or the effects of that, I should say. To where it's become more baseball now. You're seeing hit and run, bunts. Guys playing great defense, emphasis on pitching again. Another strikeout number nine by Brandon Beachy. He struck out four nationals in the Braves' 6 4 win here August 3rd when he went five innings, four runs on seven hits. First pitch swinging, Marrero, low throw, and what a pick by Freddie Freeman. Helping out Jack Wilson there. This ball game going to the seventh. Good defense by that other rookie, Freeman, and the Nats lead 4-1. Sunday, 135, the Braves and the Nats. First 10,000 fans, Steven Strasburg strikes again t-shirt presented by Geico. There are a number, a limited supply of $2 tickets available and a drink special two-for-one Coca-Colas. Go to nationals.com slash fan alley. Some restrictions apply while supplies last and come and enjoy your last day of baseball here at home next year. Hopefully the Nats will be going for the series win after they grab this one today. Steven Strasburg scheduled to pitch again Wednesday in Florida and Chin Ming Wong a very strong six innings today. He did a nice job with that tight little slider back door to left. He's with two strikes. Got a couple of punch outs on that. He did a good job keeping his sinker down in the zone. You see another slider right there to Michael Bourne. So Chin Ming Wong very effective today. Had good stuff and just another good outing. From Wong. Tom Gorzolani has been very effective out of the bullpen this week. Couple of great outings in Philadelphia. He'll face a right hander Ugla, but then he gets lefties McCann and Freeman, and that's why he gets the call first from the bullpen today. Well, six innings in the scorebook, and the Nats on top. That changes dramatically the Atlanta bullpen scenario for the rest of this game, as long as Washington keeps that lead. 
That's the way to keep O'Flaherty, Venters, and Kimbrell on that bench out in left field. Dan Ugla 0 for 2. He's pulled it twice to Zimmerman. One a grounder, one a line drive. It's a good tailing fastball by Gorzolani. 1 1. Last time out Thursday at Philadelphia, Gorzolani got the hold. He went two thirds of an inning, gave up one hit, walked one, but he got some big outs in a crucial situation. He's been very, very solid since he's been moved to the bullpen. in this series three hits all last night seven at bats couple of RBIs and Gorzolani gets a high fastball in there to fill the count it looks like Dan Ugla was taken all the way and that's a pitch he can handle After Wong didn't walk anybody through six, Tom Gorzolani walks his first batter in the seventh. Pretty good game flow going though. Nats on top, four to one here. Brian McCann coming in, and we invite you to be one with it. Hand cooked tires. Couple of tough lefties here. McCann's always hit well against left-handers. And Tom Gorzolani gets ahead. Gorzolani against lefties this year, 161. In the air to center. That should be easy for the drifting Rick Ankeel. Now Brian McCann 0 for 13 career off Tom Gorzolani after that at bat. Wow. Not many pitchers can make that claim lefties or righties. That'll bring in Freddie Freeman who homered last time up. They are heading into the bottom of the eighth in St. Louis now. And the Cubs still lead 1-0. Looks like Sean Marshall is going to come out of the bullpen to replace Rodrigo Lopez, who shuts out St. Louis on four hits through seven. That's a good breaking ball. We talked about it last night with Severino facing lefties. If you can throw that slider for a strike and make the lefty aware of it that you can throw it for a strike now you can expand the strike zone with it and throw it for a ball like that. But until you show hitters that you could throw your off speed for a strike they disrespect it they see the rotation they don't have to swing but for Tom Gorzolani why he's been so good against lefties is he's throwing that slider for strike one he's throwing that slider for strike two and then he expands the zone once he gets into a two strike count against lefties.
He'll get the left handers attention with a fastball high tight. That's a good purpose pitch right there. That was to keep Freddie Freeman from diving for this slider. He's about to throw away. I mean, you can do two things. You can go back in there with the fastball, but once you stand a guy up, you're telling him you're trying to keep him off the slider. He went back in there with a the fastball. Yes, he did. Got a little ground ball foul. Got him on an off-speed pitch way down there. Freeman couldn't reach it. And Gorzolani gets a key second out here in the seventh. So you make him more of the fastball in, then you go with the slider, and Freeman pulled off. He couldn't stay back. So that's just a nice sequence. You go with that fastball in to get to that slider away. That's how you set up a hitter. Pitch track brought to you by Verizon, America's largest and most reliable wireless network. So a runner aboard two outs now. It's Gorzolani against Jack Wilson. Former Pittsburgh teammates. Jack Wilson one for two with a base hit today. One for six in the series. And he had him reaching, trying to grab that 93 mile an hour tailing fastball. And Corzolani can get out of this. Then all of a sudden, the Braves see the Nationals version of Venters and Kimbrell. Tyler Clipper getting loose right now. Drew Storm hasn't thrown a couple of days. So this turns into a very big out in this ballgame. Oh, yeah, the bullpen's all set up right now. It's all about who has the lead in the seventh inning. Last night, Atlanta. Today, the Nats. 2 1. got some kind of hook going today doesn't matter who's hitting righty or left and slider down the zone Wilson can stay back Swing and a miss. Gorzolani shakes off the leadoff walk. Fly ball, two strikeouts. Time to stretch. 4-1 Washington. And the Nats have a three-run lead over the Braves. Today is also Pudge Rodriguez's final home start of the season. But he told me there's still a lot of baseball left for him. Absolutely. It's still a lot of, lot of baseball in me. I'm not... You know, I don't have any retirement plan in my in myself, so I I will continue to play and I still have left on me. And 
Pudge said to me this morning, he said he plans on playing at least another two or three years. Also this winter, he plans on playing winter ball with his son, Derek, who's a minor leaguer in the twin system. Bob, that big? Well, doesn't that sound like fun? He might play at least 50. He's a very young 39. Postseason MVP, season MVP back in 99. Look at that, seven silver sluggers. 13 gold gloves and 14 all-star games. It's been an amazing ride for Pudge Rodriguez. And it's been our honor to be part of it here. So he will lead off here in the bottom of the seventh. Looks like Lance Nix will hit after him. For Gorzolani, who puts a big zero up on the board for the Nats. This is... Anthony Varvaro, 26 year old right hander from Staten Island, New York. Braves claimed him off waivers from Seattle last January. And for Varvaro, 16th appearance, 21 innings, 22 strikeouts. A fastball, curveball change from Varvaro. Pudge Rodriguez, base hit. And that's number 2,843. On base for the second time today. Check out the dugout right now. They're giving Pudge a standing ovation. Worth on the top step, core on the top step. That's good stuff. You know, you may go through a long career up here and only get to play with maybe one or two guys like that, if you're lucky. Just a patented Pudge Rodriguez swing, taking a fastball in the inner half, firing his hands inside the baseball, a little inside-out piece to right field for a knock. That's that our Jeep Exmo. Stop by the Jeep Celebration event this weekend at your local Jeep dealer. A couple of more runs would feel very nice here. Lance Nix hits for Gorzolani. One inning, no hits, no runs, a walk, two strikeouts. And Gorzolani bridges the gap from Wong to the back of the bullpen. They're in the ninth now at St. Louis. Cubs one, Cardinals nothing. If Chicago holds on to win, Atlanta's magic number goes down to two no matter what the Nats do to them today. They'd have to come back here and win to get it down to one. And Nix will fight that one off. Great crowd today. 33,986. So 62,000 plus attending the first two games of this final weekend. It's a fan alley at the ballpark. I think... A big reason why Pudge's teammates were on the top step giving a standing ovation right now is because, you know, he's never said anything through all this. He hasn't played a whole lot. We said his last start was July 4th. And they see a teammate that every single day goes to the cage, works out hard, gets his work done. And I think that's a great testament to him that his teammates are on the top step giving him a standing ovation when he gets a hit. I mean, they're showing him that, hey, we understand what you went through. You played a lot your whole career. You're a Hall of Famer, or going to be a Hall of Famer, in my opinion. You know, you could be the disgruntled guy at the end of your career. I've been with those guys before, to where, you know, it's the twilight of their career, yeah. and they're in the clubhouse, and they're, you know, they're causing commotion, and they're talking this and talking that, kind of fracturing a ball club. But I think that speaks volumes of what the rest of the ball club thinks about Pudge. You know, they just showed it right there. Everybody on the top step, almost like a college atmosphere. Giving a guy a standing no for a base hit. Ralph Kiner used to have a great line about players like that as Desmond steps in. He said, they never said hello till it was time to say goodbye. And he hasn't been that guy. He's been nothing but positive every single day, helping guys out. All the while, wanting to play. Ian Desmond 0 for 3 today, playing solid defense. The Nats have scored four runs on six hits today without either of their first two batters on base. And every day, 
that success can run up and down the lineup. Everybody has to contribute different days, different guys. Today it's the middle of the order and the bottom driving in runs, including the pitcher. And sometimes you can contribute with your glove. And Ian Desmond made some nice plays today. You'll have to reach for that 0-2 pitch to stay alive. Rick and Keel, well, exactly the same for him. No hits today, but an amazing catch in center field that saved a run at a crucial juncture of the game. This play on Michael Bourne, one to remember. Desmond will take the fastball in there. Two outs here in the seventh. You never get tired of looking at plays like this. Now, personally, if I had my choice, I'd rather watch Rick Ankeel throw a baseball than catch one, but this is beautiful. And when you're talking about a runner on first base, two outs right there, and if he doesn't get that, the speed of Michael Bourne, who knows what happens. That could have been an inside-the-park home run. At least three bases. Great adjustment. Fired up this ballpark. Fired up his team. Those are my shades, said Jason Wirth as he gave him a high five. They had just exchanged sunglasses a play earlier. Two and zero. Pudge still at. First base with two outs. And Keel hits it up the middle. That's where Jack Wilson's playing. He'll throw him out, and this one is into the eighth inning. Bottom two for the Braves. 4-1, Nats. From Navy Federal makes car buying easy. Visit NavyFederal.org to calculate your payment. And by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Man, look how big Hondo looks when you look straight up on him out there in left center field. The great Frank Howard, a rookie of the year. Home runs in this town by which all others will always be measured. And then Sunday at 1:30, season series finale between the Nats and the Braves. If they could win tonight and tomorrow, they could tie the season series. Mike Miner, 4-0 and 8 starts as his recall. Ross Deadweiler, seven innings, shut out the Phillies just the other night. Coverage begins at 1 p.m. Johnny and Ray Nats Extra. We'll join you from the booth at 1.30. First pitch, 1.35.
Here comes Tyler Clippard for the eighth against Jason Hayward, Brooks Conrad, and Michael Bourne. And a first pitch heater is upstairs. See the numbers on Clippard right there. 101 strikeouts ranked second among all Major League Baseball relievers. Craig Kimbrell from the Braves, number one with 124. And lefty's hitting 168 against Clipper this year. Righty's hitting just 160. Hayward 0 for 2 today. That's a hot shot. Danny Espinosa cradles it for a big first down here in the eighth. MLB.com's at bat 11. It's an app for your iPhone, iPad, Android, and Blackberry live baseball. Follow the Nats with game day pitch by pitch tracking, in progress box scores and stats, breaking news and searchable video highlights. Text at bat to 31826 or visit nationals.com to check it out. Switch hitter Brooks Conrad for the Braves here with one out. Thirteen pinch hits this year, three of them home runs and ten RBIs. So on a ball club has got some good pinch hitters, and there's line break. Like Eric Hinsky. Brooks Conrad has pretty good stats. Clippard bounces one way out in front. Outside two and one. And that's outside three and one. Well, with a three run lead right here, this is just a here it is fastball. Hit it, put it in play. Don't put anybody on for free. Oh man, way upstairs. Now the top of the order coming up. Braves don't have the tying run in the batter's box yet, but it's on deck. And this will get a visit from Pudge. Now one thing about Tyler Clippert, even if he doesn't have fastball command, I've seen him get through games where maybe his fastball's up and he wants it down the zone. Obviously with two strikes, he'll climb the ladder with it. But the one thing he always has in his back pocket and the one thing he can throw for strikes at any time is a changeup. So maybe when your fastball is not there, it's like a golfer. You're not hitting your driver that day. Go to your three wood. And Tyler Clipper does that very, very well. St. Louis Cardinals have a runner at third base with two outs in the bottom of the ninth. Trying to. Stay alive here in this wild card race. Tyler Clippard gets a strike, and it's one and one to Michael Bourne. 0 for 3 today. Zimmerman plays even with the bag at third. So does Marrero at first. He'd have to have a one hopper at somebody for a double play here. That's into right field. Conrad turns and easily goes to third. 
And now the tying run is coming into the box. So he finally got a fastball down to Michael Bourne, but he was on it. And heater right where Pudge wanted it. Good adjustment getting the ball down, but Michael Bourne beat a good pitch. So now you got to go to your strikeout stuff, and Steve McCaddy's going to go out there and tune him up. A couple of things you want to do right here. Get Tyler Clipper back in the strike zone. Tell him what you need to tell him. But set your defense as far as first and third against the steal. You know, up by three runs. I don't think Michael Bourne's going to go anywhere. I'd be shocked if he does with the heart of the Braves order coming up. But just a quick chat. Who's got the bag? Are we throwing through? What are we doing? But obviously the hitter is the priority up by three. Martin Prado, second most double play balls of any Atlanta hitter this year, 16. <laughs> 87, he gets the call. First time the Braves have had an at bat with a runner in scoring position today. A lot of danger lurking with Chipper Jones and then Dan Ugla. And a 1 1 changeup gets a pop up. Ryan Zimmerman just can't reach it. Top of the eighth inning, Washington on top, four to one. Tyler Clipper 11 for 11 against a quality hitter. Runner goes off first. Is that a swing? The runner's out. Two outs. I mean, On a bullet by Pudge. What a throw by Pudge Rodriguez. That can't happen down by three runs. You got a guy on deck with 17 home runs, a guy in the hole with 35 home runs. You're down by three late. If you steal second base, you have to do it standing up for me in this situation. You got a guy back there with a cannon. I can't believe that Michael Bourne even tried to steal. Pud Rodriguez, two for two today, 50% on the year. Two balls and two strikes now to Martin Prado. Pretty good damage by Clippard right there. You get to the top of the eighth inning. You're down by three runs. You're in a wild card race. Yeah. You're looking for a three run homer to tie this up. Michael Bourne being on second base. The only thing it does, it takes him out of a double play scenario. But the risk reward for me is not enough. 
he got a future Hall of Famer on deck. He got a guy with 35 home runs with his helmet on, his batting glove down in the dugout, trying to get to the plate. There's certain times when being aggressive isn't advantageous. That was one. A great throw by Pudge. Yeah, now the tying run back in the on deck circle where the Nats would like to have it. And a fly ball to right. Worth will back up. And in the ninth inning, Triple Jones and Dan Uglo, neither can represent the tying run. What a day for Pudge Rodriguez. Earlier, he guns out McCann and the best in baseball board right there. One, they're amazing this year when they score first, and they did today. Chin Ming Wong deserving for, of a win if the bullpen can take care of the rest. And Chris Marrero has his 10th big league RBI. It is time for our fourth drive of the game, and we're going to go all the way back to the second inning. Chris Marrero up. Two strikes, base it up the middle. RBI, and that put the Nats on the board. You say, well, how is that your fourth drive of the game? Well, the Nats are 56 and 22, and they score first, so... We thought that was a big deal. That's our fourth drive of the game. Scott Linebrink will take over for the Braves. It'll be his 62nd appearance, 39 strikeouts in 51 innings, and the league hitting a pretty healthy 287 against him. Ryan Zimmerman takes one outside. Evidently in St. Louis, Carlos Marmol has walked three batters, and St. Louis has tied the game, including Ryan Terrio, the ex Cub, with two outs. Not that surprised to hear that, to be honest. Sometimes against that, guys, all you have to do is stand like a statue and he'll walk you. Zimmerman rips it. Hayward flinches and still makes the catch. That ball was smoked and it looked like he lost it in the lights. That was a weird reaction to a line drive in a day game. You see the swing from Zimmerman. Can't hit a line drive any harder than that. And look at Hayward. I know the lights are on here, but they don't have the same effect in the day as far as your vision goes as they do at night. But apparently Jason Hayward battling something right there on that line drive from Zimmerman. Now we understand that Carlos Marmol has thrown a wild pitch and St. Louis walks off with a 2-1 win against the Cubs. And I'm looking at the Braves dugout right now and there's not a lot of guys in it. I bet you they're in the clubhouse right now watching that. The Cubs blow one in the ninth with a bases loaded walk and a wild pitch. 
Kind of sounds like the outing Cardinals Marmol had in this ballpark. Michael Morse is 0 for 3. The Nats lead 4 1 in the eighth inning. And a breaking ball that is foul tipped. So with St. Louis winning, it's a two and a half game spread, and the Braves' magic number at the moment remains at three. I saw the wild pitch, and it was not even close. I mean, just a fastball that he hung on to, almost hit for Callum and Nee, went all the way to the screen, and that was that. And that's upstairs to Michael. And a count of three balls, one strike. Payoff pitch with one out. And Morris hammers it to right field. Heading for the wall and right in front. Hayward is there to grab it. Today's copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Washington Nationals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form in the accounts and descriptions of this game. May not be disseminated without the expressed written consent of the Washington Nationals. Two outs, bottom of the eighth, Jason Worth coming in. Worth has walked twice, stolen a base, scored twice. <laughs> Drew Storen is ready in the Washington bullpen for the ninth inning. It'll face Jones, Ugla, and McCann. This little flare over to foul ground. Freddie Freeman not able to get there. Two pitch way outside. And Jason Worth will be punched out on a pitch. It appeared to be up and in. Here we go, top of the ninth. The young closer, three good veteran hitters.
Weekend wraps up tomorrow. Sunday, the Braves and the Nats at 135. $2 tickets, a limited supply. A two-for-one Coca-Cola drink special. And the first 10,000 fans take home the Strasburg Strikes Again t-shirt presented by Geico. Check it out on the Nationals website as we wrap up the whole portion of the season tomorrow. Top of the ninth, Nationals lead 4-1. to one. And for the Braves, it'll be Chipper Jones, Dan Ugla, and Brian McCann in a three-run game. Call to the bullpen for Drew Storen, packaged by the UPS store. We love logistics. Looking for his 41st save. And with saves on the line this year in 45 appearances, he has an ERA of 1.71. He's fifth in the Nassar League in saves. The other four guys are going to the playoffs. So last time out, game two at Philadelphia, his 40, 40th save of the year, he pitched an inning and struck out two. So two seam fastball, four seam fastball, slider, and an occasional changeup from Drew Storn. Roger Bernardino for speed and defense in left field. He'll be batting ninth on the double switch. Chipper Jones leads off one for three today. And in the series, two for seven. First pitch, ground ball, right side, Danny Espinoza for an easy out. I thought that was a changeup. I looked up, it was 95, but the way Chipper Jones swung at that, it was almost like he was gearing up for 100. Way out in front of that 95-mile-an-hour two-seam fastball from Drew Storm. Chipper Jones now 0 for 3 career against Drew Storm. Dan Ugla is three for five with a home run. But thanks to Tyler Clippard's setup job in the eighth inning, Braves still need two base runners to get the tying run in the batter's box. Ugla today 0 for 2 with a walk. If the Nats hold on to win here, Atlanta's wild card advantage over to St. Louis over St. Louis sinks to two games. Look at the snap on that breaking ball. Strike two. Hey, that's a good one. Short, tight, and late right there. And he'll throw him 102 off the plate outside and the count. One ball, two strikes. That's trying to get a little bit closer in the season series. 9 to 8. Atlanta would leave it. Mike Miner, Ross Detwater, lefties tomorrow. DC 50 joins us for the final home game of the season. 135, first pitch. Storm gets up to pop it up. It's over the dugout, out of play. And Ross Detwater coming off that amazing start last time out against the Phillies. We'll have a lot of fans in St. Louis rooting for him tomorrow. As does uh, the kid from Indiana right now, Drew Storm. Fastball <laughs> stays away, 2-2. Two -two. By the way, of interest, the Mets just beat the Phillies 2-1 to one in New York, first of two, and the Phillies have lost seven in a row. Hmm. Nobody ever lost six in a row after they clinched. Storin challenges Ugla, who gets it up the middle. Great grab by Espinosa, and no chance at first. Base it all the way. Amazing that Danny Espinosa could even make a play on that ball. And if you're wondering why Danny Espinosa threw this ball, I mean, what a play. Drew Storen tried to give it the backhand <laughs> right there. But going up the middle, 
you throw this ball because A, you have a strong arm, and B, sometimes a runner will think that's a base hit and will start to banana out and take their turn. I've seen guys get thrown out on that play before because they get wide. They think that ball's into the outfield. So good job of making the throw. You never know. Next up, Brian McCann, 0 for 1 career with a strikeout against Storen. 1 for 3 today with an opposite field single back in the second. Pop fly left side playable. Zimmerman and Desmond. Ian has the angle on the fair ball to outs. Byron Kerr, Ray Knight standing by, Nats extra. When this one is over. As the Nats try to win their 77th game of the year, their 43rd here at home, and their eighth against Atlanta. One out away from trying to split the season series tomorrow. Here's Freddie Freeman, one for three with a base, uh, actually a long base hit, a solo homer back in the fifth. Crowd of 34,000 chanting Drew here. <laughs> Little foul tip, and it's 0 2. Drew Stern trying to save it for Chin Ming Wong, who would go four and three with a win. Six very effective innings, a run on four hits for him. And a one two. Game over! Nationals beat the Braves to split the series so far. And Drew Storen, number 41. Pudge Rodriguez throws out two base runners today, including Michael Bourne in a wonderful defensive effort. And the magical season for Drew Storm continues. And how about the Nats? 11 and 3 in their last 14 games. A lot of great performances today, but for me,